do it. Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome to the teams. It's the Wednesday, the 13th of March. It is round one eve. Lep Dog is with me and we are ready to see what's going to happen. Hello, mate. What's up? Oh, mate. Just uh, excited for, for football to begin. I know we had footy last week if you were lucky enough to be in Queensland, but very excited for Melbourne footy to begin. The proper start to the season, Richmond mm -hmm. v Carlton. Mm -hmm. uh, Carlton home game, there's going to be the clubs talking about like there might be 90,000 there, which is just going to blow the roof off it in, in round one. It's going to be massive. Yeah, man. It's. Oh, I don't think many of us were thinking that we'd be rolling into round one against Richmond with four points banked. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. As, as much as I uh, tipped us on the show, I don't know that it was a particularly confident tip, but we'll take the win. Uh, but yeah, I think the way I see it, we're kind of just, we've got a free four points to play with. Um, I definitely had us like probably we really wanted to go three from the first four. Obviously, we still want to, but I think we've kind of got a freebie already, which is great. And, yeah. uh, and Richmond, it's going to be an interesting game. They... Looked all right for patches, but they didn't look amazing for the bulk of that game. And um, it's probably been a while since we went in as out-and-out -out favourites for an opening round. Maybe last mm. year, if I'm remembering correctly. I don't remember exactly what it was last year, but I have a feeling it might have been like a, I don't know, dollar eighty-two dollars type situation. Mm. My mm. mate, uh, look, I'm I'm pumped. It's Thursday, I think. Um, I'm assuming we're, we're all going to be there. Let us know in chat if you're going to be there. Uh, I'll certainly. Be, I'm going to be there so early, man. I'm just going to be so nervous. I'm going into work to work tomorrow. But let's be honest, I'm just going to be thinking about the game all day. Yeah. Yeah. What's your what's your game day routine for MCG? Or do you have a set thing that you do? Uh, on, on a weekend, honestly, Dad and I, Dad likes to get there really early. So I'll just... And we drive in because his Achilles is cooked. So um, we will rock up like an hour and a half early and that's like the latest we will be there. And Dad will want to get two hot dogs and, <laughs> and we just kind of wander around and sit in our seats and get cranky when people come and sit in front of us. It's uh, it's pretty standard. Like for me, it's going to the footy or going to Carlton games, I should say. It's not a big sort of song and dance it's just what dad and i do and we just kind of chat and it's very quiet and zen until the ball gets bounced um but then other other like non-carlton teams i just let loose because uh you know i don't give a shit about their teams mm -hmm. fair fair wow i was i mean i was buzzing last week woke up so much energy and that was an interstate game so tomorrow i've got to get a good night's sleep tonight because tomorrow's going to be a late one with the fan cams but it's just so hard it's to sleep like last week. Game. Yeah, fan cams went for about seven hours the other day. Yeah, we broke a record two hours and 40, 40 43 minutes, I think it was um, almost as long as the Crips Tribunal, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, geez, we've done some things, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> There's been some things happening. Um, yes. I'm very excited though. Like, well, do you, do you want to do a quick? Obviously, we've done all the recap videos and we've done that. But how 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 were you feeling after the Brisbane game? Um, oh, I actually watched the fan cams back the first hour or so because I remember in the moment coming straight into the studio, and I remember after an hour not believing that it had gone for an hour and. You know what they say, you, you know, things travel, time flies when you're having fun. Mm. Um, it's such a blur. It was one of the best things I've seen. But I feel like I'm speaking in hyperbole when I say that because we've been saying that for the last few games now. Um, I'm just proud and I'm just stoked. And I mean, you know, we've been doing this for a long time now and we've waited for days like this to come and to be living through these type of games um finally is just like you just have to soak it up so i'm just i'm just proud and i'm ready for whatever it's not always going to be as good as what it was last week we're going to lose games and there's going to be all of that but while we do have special wins like that you just got to enjoy them right oh mate 
absolutely. We just you gotta you gotta live like that, and it's a different vibe, right? So I remember Cade Simpson's three hundredth game, whatever. There was about six people in the crowd. I think it was against Port Adelaide. Um, <laughs> I think we got smashed. And then I was just reading Carlton put out a, a thing today about you know there might be ninety thousand there this weekend, and three of our biggest ten crowds ever home and away games have come in the last two years. And then wow. um, some of our biggest ever games have come, including the finals. So, like, the, every, we're all here for it. We're all ready to go. We're all jumping on. And I think um, I think if that game last last week was in Melbourne, it would have been 85-plus. It's going to be 85-plus again tomorrow. Everyone's going to be super excited. Coming mm-hmm. off a big – we would have been regardless of the result last week, but the fact that we're coming off a win, I think uh, – I think those extra few people might be rocking up that otherwise might have missed it. So oh, it's exciting stuff. It's exciting stuff. And I don't know, Tez, it feels real now as well. Does that make yeah. sense? It feels real and we feel like we're not kind of faking our way at least. And I don't really have fear anymore because after experience the finals last year, I can't, even when we were, I, I wasn't sitting there thinking we're going to win when we're 46 points down. But like I wasn't thinking this is the end of the world um, you know, season's over, Doc gets hurt. I'm not sitting there going, oh, geez, how are we going to cover? It's like I'm actually really confident in the club now. And that's yeah. largely because of the fans, but it's largely because of everyone's bought in. It's crazy. Mm. Well, that was so big for me and something I was probably concerned about going into opening round because obviously practice matches had happened and for whatever reason, the community started just sort of maybe just tapping into the trauma a little bit, you know, because obviously we didn't get the results in the preseason, didn't look good on the scoreboard, the intensity wasn't there defensively and, um, you know, for whatever reason, you know, some just got a little scared and, like, I'm not saying people are right or wrong for feeling how they feel because I actually do understand where that trauma comes from but um, my big one was, like, we've got to move on. Um, yeah. Someone reminded me last night, they put a comment up, well, the other night, they put a comment up on the 29, 20. 20 fan cams against Port Adelaide, the last game of the year where they kicked 19 in a row. And I think that right there is why I'm so much more relaxed and happy now because this was a basket case to watch every week, every year for like four years straight, if not longer. So now I'm like, whether we win or lose, I know how we're going to play. If teams are going to beat us this year, they're going to have to be really, really good because we're very hard to beat, you know? So... I'm just down and locked into that process mentality, one one step at a time mentality right now. Yeah, I think you you look at our systems and our personnel and all that, and that's all falling into place, and that's hard enough to beat on its own. You look at the sort of the buy-in from the players, the relationships they're building, and the fact that they're able to, and have done it a couple of times, not to the extent of last week, come back when the odds are against them. they It'll scare the shit out of you if you're coming up across them because you know you're, you're probably never safe, particularly if Charlie hasn't kicked any goals yet or Harry hasn't kicked any goals yet. So for me, there's absolute and, – and Harry talked about it after the game in his interviews, talked about the love and the relationships and the trust they're all building. And, like, you, when the team's still shit and they're saying that, it's very hard to believe it. But now that you're seeing the results, and maybe it's a journey, it's obviously a journey, but now you're seeing the results. It's like, I fully believe it. Like, I think these guys would die for each other. So it's, uh, geez, I wouldn't want to be playing against us. Yeah. I mean, and I think we'll just have a really easy, easier gauge on the team over four quarters now based off the way they apply their pressure. Because that's us. If our pressure is on in the Carlton way, um, we know we're a great side. And if it's not, we're pretty average. We're just like yeah. around the middle of the pack of the league if we don't have that Carlton um, trademark pressure. that I mean, that's how I see it anyway. It's a very simple way to look at it, but uh, they've made it really clear. We're a defense first team, a pressure and contest team first. If that's off, we're off. Yeah, no, and 100%. And that's the the opportunity again this week. I think Richmond are going to stuff around with it. They like to play a bit of possession. They like to chip it around. They like getting relatively large numbers in terms of disposals and stuff. So the pressure is on. And Vossi talked about it, and I totally disagreed with him at the time when he first started talking about it. We're a defense team first. And I was like, we haven't kicked 10 goals in eight weeks, Vossi. What the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) Um, But he's right. We're a defense first team first and if we can defend in the back half and cause turnover Pom always talks about this that's where we're going to generate our scores from and if we can 
defend through the middle, that's going to cut them off as well. So um, we know we can score and defense, pressure, attack around the ball. That's where we're going to win this one. And uh, and to be honest, and now I know they're getting um, players back. Richmond have lost a lot of that uh, over the last couple of years as they've sort of started to age out and stuff. So we'll see. Um, I'm relatively confident as long as we show up and, as you said, apply the pressure. Yeah, man. Johnny Holden, letting everyone know to hit the like button. Shout out Content Johnny Holden. Great. Met him the other day. Great bloke. How good is John Holden? <laughs> He's a legend. He is. He is. Um, the content's free. It stays on YouTube. There is no external platform that you pay X amount of dollars to watch the content. The least we need is a like and a subscribe because I know that 36% of people that watch the content are not subscribed. That's wild to me. So if you can, log into your Gmail account and hit the subscribe button. Uh, also, before we get onto the game, um, this is another channel you should subscribe to, Lek Dog. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you should. Uh, you Tell should us. subscribe. What, what are we going to find on the Leg Dog channel? So I do a lot of hobbying, painting models, um, painting, building things, that sort of stuff. I've always done it, and I decided to start filming it because I was inspired by a few people that I'm, I've become close with over the internet over the last couple of years. It's basically tracking my journey as I try new things in the art world, painting models. You can probably see them behind me. Uh, so it's all that. It used to be a footy channel. It's not that anymore. So if if you're if you're missing the footy content, just subscribe to Blue Abroad, Pommy and Oz. That's where you'll see me. Absolutely. Um, but yes, go, jump on. It's even if you don't want to watch it and you don't like it, just give me a like and subscribe as well. Mm -hmm. Give me some love, no, baby. That's right. No, absolutely. Uh Matthew. Yeah, yeah. It's thirty. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. But it is what it is. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this game tomorrow. So. I think what we do know is Dusty and Nank and Tom Lynch are playing. Is that right? It sounds like it. I've just had whispers come in that uh, Naismith's getting dropped, so you'd assume that Nank is is back in if that's the case. Okay. Uh, they, because... They're three pretty big ins in terms of important players for Richmond. Yeah, massive ins, and that was kind of going to lead me to my next question, which you answered, because if Naismith and Nank were playing, I was going to ask... Is this one of those games where you play Pito and TDK? Is it still one of those games where you play Pito and TDK even if Naismith doesn't play? Yeah, the Pito TDK against Nank thing worked well. Uh, I can't remember if it was the round one last year or the year before, but basically TDK jumped over the top of him in the second half. And again, I might be spreading rumours, but I am still hearing that Pido's not up to it. He still can't uh, run for long enough to run out of game. So if, if he's named in this team, then my whispers are wrong, but I, I've been told he'll be back post by, um, which I know you know he's not in the injuries list. So take that with a grain of salt. I think after TDK's performance, I'm, I'm don't change the winning formula sort of man. So I think TDK did enough for me to stay in. I don't think he's going to keep Pido out all year, but if there's any question marks over Pido's fitness uh, for tomorrow, I'm not naming him, and I'm I'm just backing in TDK to do it. And yep, I don't think I don't think Richmond play a style where if Nank is overpowering TDK, I don't think he's just going to smash it out really wide, and Richmond players are going to run onto it. I think it's still going to go drop to drop to his feet, and it's still going to be on our inside mids to sort of compete there. So. If you'd asked me this question before last week, I probably would have been pr pretty scared of Nank v TDK. But after seeing him take on Big O, um, I'm pretty comfortable with it. Yeah. I was really impressed with Tom's ability to just stay strong in the contest. Uh, he's not getting pushed around like he used to, uh, particularly in that last five to seven minutes of the game. Um, mm -hmm. Like the hit outs to advantage percentage wasn't very high, which was a bit of a surprise to me when we did the rating show with Pommy. Um, so obviously that's that needs to increase in order for us to get the benefit of TDK in there more than what we already do. But are we slowly getting to a point now? Like is, is, is Tom ready? Like is, is he becoming ready to be Tom? Like is this Tom now? Maybe I, it might be. Look, I, I don't. Uh, I've been pretty. I don't think that he's ever going to be the best ruckman in the competition. I don't, yeah. and I don't think we should expect that from him. Um, but what he needs to be is serviceable, and there's been no question really over his effort. And I think his below below the knees stuff's pretty good. 
his tap work when he's jumping over his opposition is is always solid. The question has always been the sort of strength thing for me, um, and I'll, I'll say this forever. I still think at some stage we're going to see him play in defence as he in, in his old age, but um, it could be the time for him. There's no better time for him than now. He's still young mm. by a footballer's standard. Uh, he's still growing into his his big frame, but. What I what what I would like to see with him ideally is is a pairing of, well, like what Harry Mackay has been doing, uh, another guy who can be forward of the ball and compete in the air. I think if TDK is going to be our number one ruck, we need a pinch hitter. I mm -hmm. probably don't want it to be Harry Mackay. Um, You're not on uh, Harry Mackay in the ruck. I uh, look, look. I I think he did it well. I like it when it's in the forward half, but I I don't love him at centre bounces. But if it's what he needs just to get his hands on the ball and build his confidence, um, and I don't know that that's the case, but if if it's helping him in that regard, then hell, put put him in the middle. I don't care. Like whatever Harry wants is what I want because I love that man. You know, there was a play against the Lions last week, which I think we might see a bit more when Harry does play in the ruck. He grabbed the ball out of the ruck. He's, he, he's got a quick first step. He's worked on the speed. Um, on this particular occasion, I think he got run down. Mm. But in the initial two and a half meters, he, he, he created space for himself. And I'm just picturing, imagine Harry takes it out of the ruck one time and just like bursts out of stoppage, runs to 70 and just like kicks a goal, like it'll bring the whole stadium to its feet, you know? Oh, it, it, it'd be crazy. It'd be Nick Nat-esque. I'm not saying he's the same ruck as Nick Nat, but like that's the sort of impact he, he could have. He's got the kick. He's got yes. the height. He probably doesn't have the ruck craft at the moment, but to be honest, a lot of the ruckmen that run around in the AFL yeah. don't have that at the moment. Um, and we always reiterate this on the other shows. When we're talking about him pitch hitting, it's like, for five percent of the game or ten percent of the game, it's like mm -hmm. you know when Jason Tatum plays on a on a center for the Boston Celtics, he can do it for a play or two, but he doesn't do it all game. So mm. I've got to get that in my head when I'm talking about it as well. Harry can mm. have some rap contests. That is okay. Mm -hmm. Code but Star eight one eight five. Terry, congratulations Dang. playing this week. Get around him, boys. You helped me in the rock. Do you know I was a ruckman when I played footy? Wow. Yeah, very undersized. I was a Jack Silvani undersized ruckman, premiership player in the Thomastown Reserves, mate, 2014. Yeah, well named done. it full forward in the granny, but played played ruck most of the year while our actual ruckman was injured. Yeah, well done. I only ever I pl only ever really played basketball. I was in a very undersized centre, aka fatter than I looked, so I had a good good uh, good weight beneath me, and Ooh. very briefly played some footy and played as a terrible small forward. Wow. Um, guys, apparently teams are out and Corey Durden's in. Bang. Hang on. Let's do it. Let's – can we – can someone link? Because I don't see. It could have just been broken on the news early like it. Yeah, it looks like Channel 7 might have a bit of a, a deal with the AFL and the clubs on the teams. Hey, what do we got? I always got in trouble. I very briefly worked in the AFL world and we could not release it before 620 because mm. people scooped it and went live with it. Let's uh, let's have a look. I'm just waiting for something online that I can share my screen with. Channel 7. Mate, if Durden's in, I'm stoked with that. <laughs> that would be uh that would be interesting. That probably means Motlop's not in. Wonder what yeah, it means I, for the uh well Motlop was a one to two weeker as of the fourth of March. So maybe they're just being a bit conservative. I will share the screen as soon as I see teams, guys. I uh, promise I'll share the screen and we can dissect it. <laughs> um also got a special guest, uh Quinn from Tiger Den TV and the Pressure Point podcast will be joining me. At about 6.45, we're going to do the Combined 23 live here on the channel. So um, stick around for that. The Pressure Let Point go. Podcast. That's an interesting name. That feels yeah. very – that feels like it should be a Carlton podcast. Mm. Mm. It does feel like it should be. Well, well. to be fair, Marcus – it's Marcus and Quinn. So Marcus is – Oh, okay. Man, right, yes. So yes. That, um, that makes sense. Yes. For those of you who were on – who've got this information from Channel 7, can you please let us know? So if Durden's in, does that mean Carol's gone up into the team and Durden's on the bench? Like, what's the move and who's come out apart from Doc? 
might might be Oe's out, Carroll for Doc. Mm. Maybe that's it. Maybe Moyer as a sub. If I'm, they won't. We won't know subs till tomorrow, will we? Mm. Oh, God, I can't take this stress. His video. Channel Seven spoiling the uh, the teams is is my living nightmare. By the way, I know, I know. Mitch Cleary going early with it is very frustrating. Come on, man, come on. <laughs> Where are these teams at, man? Come on, I just want to share the damn screen. This is absolutely ridiculous. Do they not uh, have FN any consideration? No, that? they don't. FN Hub in the comments. How about we rest Saad Ramadan? No, Saad. No. <laughs> by his own admission, yeah. plays the best football of his career during Ramadan. Uh, yes. Sadi during Ramadan is all Australian. S all Australian D Sad. Mate, Ramadan Sad is is invincible. He might he'd probably be best on tomorrow as a result. All right. So I'm just on Twitter. Ashton Moya has here. Things the teams dropping out, so uh, I'm just yeah. here. Yeah, they dropped on. They've dropped on the AFL website. Uh, Carlton, I think, just tweeted it. Carlton just tweeted Richmond, it. Richmond Stand tweeted by. it. Richmond tweeted it. Yep, and right. it's in the, the AFL team. site now. All right, here oh. we go, guys. Stand by because the team is coming. It's coming. Hang on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go through the team. Carlton has made one change to its team that will take on Richmond in round one. There's Bot. Um, name on the five-man bench. Durden is joined by Boyd, Carroll, Fogarty, Kennedy, with Bins, Moya, and Pitto as the emergencies. Um, yeah, so literally it looks like one change. All right. Here we go. It's, you don't have to. You don't have to admit your sub anymore. By the way, so that like last year it would say Jack Carroll admitted. I think. I see. But anyway, it's pretty straightforward. It's, uh... Yeah. So they've brought in a small forward. Um, do you want to run through the line by line, te like Tez, and then we can dissect? Yeah. So Zach Will, Lewis Young, Brody Kemp in the back line. Saad, McGovern, Ramadan Saad, McGovern, Nick Newman, close out the back line. Cottrell, Cripps, and Akers in the center line. We've got Cunners, Charlie, and Orazio Fantasia in the half forward line. By the way, I've been told that Fantasia loves playing Richmond, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, and this was from Essendon supporters. Um, then we've got Oes, Mackay, Hollands named in a forward pocket. Interesting. De Koning, Chera, and Hewitt. That's your stock standard uh, Ruck, Ruck, Rover division there. And then Boyd, Carroll, Durden, Fogarty, Kennedy on the bench with, yeah, Benzie, Moyer, and Pitto as emergencies. Now, Lek Dog, you wouldn't probably do this little formula to figure out the sub. What is it again? <laughs> uh, look, I'll be honest with you. Pom understands it, and I don't. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I think it's it's – they're always in alphabetical order, except the one that isn't is the sub. So J L M. So Corey Durden is the sub by um, Pom's formula. Yeah, uh, I think that's. I think although this is by last name, so I don't really know. I just trust Pom, okay. uh, and he always gets it right. I will say this: that when we did our team selection for round zero, I had Corey Durden as the sub in my team. All so right. I don't know if that. Is that if he's going to come in to be sort of cover for Fantasia or Co or uh, Owies or something like that, or if they just go again with Jack Carroll as sub. All right. Uh, I'm going to create a poll on YouTube. Who will be the sub? And you can all vote on that. So Boyd, who's the other name? Carroll. Uh, who's the other two names or three names? Erden, Fogue, and Kennedy. Fogarty. Oh, you can only do four options. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully it's not the fifth option. Well, I'm gonna I'm it, gonna go out. Boyd is definitely to... not the sub. Boyd Correct. is definitely not the sub. Correct. So I'm gonna put the other four names. I'll put a poll. There's 390 of you watching. Have a vote. Let's have a look and see what everyone thinks. Who will be the sub guy tomorrow? Could be uh, Pom and I did discuss this offline. Like it, it could be Matt Kennedy. It could be Carol replaces the Doherty role. Um, mm. Kennedy, he's more 
flexible. He can sort of play as a as a third tall or an inside. We've had an awful experience playing him at halfback. Mate. He's the most flexible of these players. I don't know if he's the most impactful, but he's the most flexible. Durden is a great sub to have because he's coming on if he plays a quarter or like whatever it is, like you just know he's just adding to the pressure around the ground that is going to already be there. Yeah, I look I, of the imp, of the players there that like are your historical impact players. I'd say he's the one that comes on and can have moments. Uh, Fogarty probably won't be the sub after his massive tackle and goals performance last week. Boyd's too good to be the sub, so it's probably yeah, Carol Durden or Kennedy. I I, I would have Durden personally, and that's probably as a bit of cover for Fantasia, a bit of cover for Owies, and also knowing that Durden's had some preseason issues where he hasn't been able to, you know, be a hundred percent available. So yeah, you don't know if he's got a hundred percent gas in the tank. Yeah, well, he played He played in the VFL last week. By all reports, it was one of those. He did some really nice things. It was a bit of a an almost game, so to speak. Um, and, yeah, I think you're right. I think, you know, coming off the hamstring, which I think he and always had a hammy mm. issue a few weeks ago, always probably looked like a guy that would be better for the run and like a guy that didn't play any preseason matches. Yeah. Um, so I think I agree with you. And then I think, you know, having Durden as the sub just keeps that pressure on. Um, Kennedy, I liked him better when he went into the midfield personally last week. Hmm. I mean, that's that's what his best role is. It's just that we've got four or five guys who can do that role just as well, if not better, and that's his mm-hmm. only issue. The other one, the other potential, and I know we're just talking about hypotheticals and we're just focusing on the sub. We should talk about other things, but Jack Carroll could just stay as the sub. We saw Paddy Dow, uh, you know, he came on as sub multiple times. He was impactful. He was able to come in on the second half, go direct and bring a bit of different pace to our midfield, and mm-hmm. he would continually get named sub multiple weeks in a row. So it's not out of the question. Um, mm-hmm. Should we run through the Richmond scumbag list? Mate, go for it. We're going to get uh, a Richmond... Oh, he's, not, he's actually a really nice guy, Quinn. We're going to get him, <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get him in soon so we can pick a, a best 23. And if he starts going with this, oh, but so-and-so is a three-time premiership player... He's no, booted. none of that. It's um, four, It's current, like, four. It's who's going to be the best team. And I'll tell you what, correct. they don't have many of them. Uh, <laughs> Backline, Grimes, Young, Gibkiss. Good luck, Tyler Young. Jaden Short, Nathan Broad, Nick Vloston. Get through the centre. Camden McIntosh, Tim Taranto, Jack Ross. Tim Taranto had about six touches last week. Half forward, Maurice Rolt, Rioli, Liam Baker, Shea Bolton, Shy Bolton. Noah Bolter, Dustin Martin, full forward, he's named, and Tom Lynch. Um, they both come in. <laughs> Richmond have actually misspelt just Dustin Martin's name on their post on their uh, website. They've called him Dustin Matten. So it's all right. Bit of respect for your three-time premiership player. Toby Nankervis, the captain, comes back in. Hopper, Presti are on the ball. Interchange and the sub will come from one of these. Rioli, Dow, Pickett, Mansell, and Campbell. Um, yeah, probably three of their most important players come into this side for them yeah. in Martin Lynch and, and Nank. So we can't just take him for uh, for granted, for sure. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about some key matchups that you expect to see. I watched the Tigers and the Suns last week. I'll tell you what I thought. I wasn't sure if the Suns were just super good and the new coach mm-hmm. bounce thing. I wasn't sure if the Tigers were just super bad. I wasn't sure think, if Dimmer yeah. just knew Richmond so intricately that he just knew exactly what to do. And then the comeback, I didn't know if it was a real comeback or if it was just the Suns taking the foot off the pedal and not being experienced. I actually probably had more questions than answers watching the Tigers last week. Look, they're going to have moments where they look really good this year, and I think they're going to have moments where they look terrible. I have them finishing about 13th for the year, mm. which uh, is would obviously be a bit of a drop-off um, from what we've recently seen. I think... The interesting matchups for me, obviously, how do they, you know, is it Broad and Young or is it Grimes? Who is it that they're going to try and play on the combo of Harry and Charlie? It's going to be difficult for whoever does it. They've got Kibkiss back there as well. But if we can get it into our forward line, I think they're going to struggle. And 
maybe George Hewitt runs with a, a Tim Taranto type who didn't get his hands on it heaps last week. And with a little bit of pressure, he can be pretty wayward with the ball. So I'd be interesting to see if it's Georgie Hewitt who maybe gives Tim Taranto some attention. And then the other one is just what we do with Jaden Short. And he's quite a distributor for them off the half back. He pushes up the ground as well, and he can play midfield at times. So I'd be interested to see if we give any sort of attention to him and, Looking at who we have named in our forward line, it could be Ollie Hollands maybe that has a bit of a run around with him to start and give him a bit of experience. I'm, I'm not too sure about that. Where did they name Rioli? Okay, half forward. No, no, Daniel Rioli. Uh, Daniel Rioli is on the interchange. Maurice Rioli is half forward. Because I thought what Dimmer – I think Dimmer lays, laid the blueprint out for everyone like the, I mean the, the way that they stifled Daniel Rioli's ability to run and carry from the back half particularly the first half um was noticeable for me um I made this comment in the preview I think or was on a Monday I mean there's a few players here for the Tigers who are young and you know I think everyone who's playing for Carlton has had solid experience in big games maybe except for Jack Carroll for example uh, all of a sudden, you're talking about a situation where you can drown out the MCG with noise and put some fear into these young kids, these less experienced guys, and all you need is for them to cough it up once, twice, three times because of our pressure and the atmosphere, and then, boom, we can score off turnover, and then away we go. Yeah, I mean, that's the key. The key is uh, they, they are going to chip it around a bit, and they are going to go sideways a lot, and it's just... Take, making taking advantage of that, applying the pressure. And I think you're right. I think we saw it last week. Their, their errors just kept compounding. Um, and we just need to have, like, we want this to be a game where we can build a lead because we know, as we saw last week, they can score in bunches, we can score in bunches. But I think this is one where we want to try and stamp them and their supporters out of the game pretty early and sort of um, maintain control of the game, go, go back to our ugly, scrappy, tackling congestion game which uh i love so much yep um the sun's stand will be interesting to see richmond with the keys but three keys back uh hello is this a gold coast fan channel that's interesting Sorry. just going time to follow up might have found yeah. some uh some gold coast fans they're out there hello and welcome they're top hello of the ladder and, and they've, they've made a fan channel bloody bang wow. <laughs> hey Let's, uh, all right. Love to see it. I find it really hard to do previews with Gold Coast. We'll talk to you later in the year, potentially. Um, <laughs> but that's really cool. Nice to meet you. Thanks for being here. Um, so, and Dr Drumkill made a good point, by the way. Five day break for the Tigers. I mean, we're, we're slightly better with a six day. It's a bit rough, isn't it? A five day break. That's <laughs> what you up. get when you marquee teams. Well, you got to, you know. It's like Collingwood complain when they've got Anzac Day and then they have like a three-day turnaround or whatever it is. Like, well, you know, that's what you get if you want the big games. Mm -hmm. Storyline that you see that you'll be keeping an eye on from this game. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, probably how does, and I don't want to focus him too much because he was quite good last week, but how does Young go on another presumably Young is going to be playing on Tom Lynch, who historically plays pretty bloody well on us. Uh, how does he match up? And I don't necessarily mind if Lynch is kicking kicks a few goals. I mind how we sort of set up behind the ball. And one one thing that was the credit to us last week, even when we had that 46 points kicked against us or whatever it was, um, there was no heads down. There was no sort of, like the body language was still pretty strong. All the defenders, like, they were aware that it wasn't necessarily their fault that goals were getting kicked. So let's keep more of that positivity from you, mm -hmm. Lewis Young. And then I just I'm I'm interested to see what sort of pressure we can put on in the front, in our front half, their back half. So I'm looking at guys like Fogarty, what Fantasia, can you bring a bit of the heat? Cunningham, he had a decent uh, cameo for a for a quarter or so last week. I just want to see that pressure and can we just like basically hold the ball in our front half. I, I, I want it to be a, an ugly game because I know we can create free-flowing movement at times and Charlie kicks three goals in 10 minutes or whatever it is. That's possible. Mm. But to get to that, we need to tire out our opponents just by basically bullying them, which <laughs> which is, it seems to be our game plan and I'm, I'm digging it. 
Yeah. Well, I think the I think the Suns went up. What was it like seventy four to one? I think it was a seventy four to yes. one run, something like that. Um, I wonder if we'd be able to get on a similar type run. Um, Mate, if we do that, I'm going to be nude in the stands pretty early. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, for my sake, I hope we keep it a little competitive. Yeah. No, I, I do have a bit. I, I think we've been through too much to be too cocky. No. We have to be humble. We have to show humility from the outset. But at some point, the group has to, you know, evolve into one of those teams that goes out and, like, comes for these teams every year and um, plays with that vicious edge. And, you know, I think a lot of these guys in our team anyway, they've experienced the times when we seemingly just could mm. not beat Richmond no matter what we did. So, yeah. No, look, I think you're right. I, I And I'm not saying this is the game, but there has to be our game where we come out as a club. And I think that's probably the final question mark I've got. We've obviously won finals. We've done the comebacks. It's not a lot of games where we've come out and just absolutely controlled the game from start to finish and put on a massive score. I don't think that this week's going to be the one that that happens, but that's my final question mark for the for our boys. It's when okay. you are the favourites and the hunters, are you going to go hunting? Mm, and that's 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 a mental challenge. Wow, it's exciting. It's exciting. Well, how are we supposed to sleep tonight, mate? Come on. Oh, mate, there's not a chance I'm sleeping. Like, I'm, I'm going to be absolutely cooked tomorrow. By the time the game starts, I'm going to be exhausted, emotional, and very, very nervous. But, mm. geez, it's going to be good to be back. Yep. Uh, are there any Richmond supporters in the chat? Please make yourselves known because I I would be curious to know how you feel about this game. Uh, I don't know. Lately, Leg Dog, not many opposition fans are in the chat. Don't know why. Yeah, it's, that's I, weird. I What's they that? They were there when we'd won two games in a year. Um, there you go. it's crazy. It's crazy. They've all been quiet about Harry this week as well. It's weird. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah. Yeah, something weird happened. Um, I will say this, yeah, we don't want to get too cocky about this game because they obviously have a lot of talent, but I just think our game plan and our overall team dynamics at the moment are just are just in a better place. So mm -hmm. I do think we'll win. Let let's tip uh let's tip margin and I don't know, player of the match. So, okay. Oh, and a, and a headline. And a headline. That's the one I always struggle with. I'll, uh, I will tip Carlton mm -hmm. <laughs> and I will tip Carlton by 28 points, which is not a smashing. It's a comfortable win. Uh, I'd like us to be up by a lot at the end. And then at the end, Richmond can kick a couple of goals to bring that margin down. Uh, best on ground. It's so boring just saying Charlie or Harry every single week. Uh, best on ground. Oh, you know what? I reckon Adam Chero. I reckon Chesney's time to to have a big game. I didn't think he did much last week, and I watched it back. I was like, oh, he does what he does every week: he tackles and gets disposals. But I think I think Chero is going to be best on. He's going to have twenty six, and he's going to kick a goal, and he's just going to be a tackling machine. And what is the head? Well, you answer that while I think of a headline. Tip, okay. margin, best on. So I've just got this feeling about Orazio tomorrow. Uh, I think Orazio kicks four goals tomorrow. Um, he got a nice little tune up in the preseason. Uh, I think the goals will come eventually. Once he feels the roar of the Carlton crowd, he's going to just, um, he's going to feel it. I think he'll kick the first goal for sure tomorrow. Don't know why. Just have a feeling. Um, I think Richmond will have a nice, nice run at us. They will absolutely come out. I don't know if it's straight away or whatever the case may be. Um, I think we'll make an adjustment. And I think that third quarter, we will. I think that might be a bit of a theme for this team. I think they'll they'll learn how to manage their energy and find a way to make sure that the game finishes on a high with their energy, and I think we will run away with it. I think we're just too strong at the moment, and I will tip us to win by hmm. 52 is the number that's actually in my head, respectfully. I like it. 
you can you can tip a respectable fifty two point margin. I think that's very respectful. Yeah. respectful. But I, I feel like there's going to be a, a ten to fifteen minute patch of Carlton footy, and the crowd's just going to be up and about. I don't know when it's coming, but it's just going to be like a pile on. I'm, re- I'm ready. I think that's our strength as well. I think we only need to. We only need a few moments. Honestly, it starts with one Charlie goal and the crowd is immediately on board and the t- you can feel the tide just start to turn. Like he's a cheat code for us. He just, as soon as he's in the game, you've got 90,000 or 80,000, however many Carlton, what the split's going to be. Just behind him on the field, it's going to be massive. Um, mm-hmm. I'm really struggling with a, with a headline because I think it's going to be something like, like Nank bumps suspension again because he's just a thug and every time we play him, he seems to injure one of our players. So I I can't get – I'm trying to construct a positive one, but I'm just seeing Nank coming in and then going straight back out with suspension. So we're going to have to go to the crowd for a couple of headlines, I think. I love this. Yeah, chat, give us some headlines. Uh, Peter V, 90K can release at the the G. (laughs) Kobe on YouTube, yes, mate, I will be at the MCG tomorrow. Absolutely. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Um, what else? I think Chez will be on the halfback with Doc, Doc out and Durden in. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not going to be one person that replaces the Doherty role. It will be a bit of a, a team effort. Who do you mm. think will be the most uh, – who do you think will be the beneficiaries of the Doc role? minutes yeah so it's it's a good one i so doc i think in our heads he's still a halfback flanker but that's he he only went behind the ball when we needed some structure and we're in a bit of trouble last week so i think that's why jordan boyd's still in this team i think the back line's relatively set in terms of the smalls with william sard newman and boyd so his role has lately been and he and he was a bit towards the back end of last year sort of wing midfield half forward. So I think George Hewitt fills the, the midfield minutes um, even more so. Mm-hmm. And Ollie Hollands, we saw him playing inside and out last uh, during the preseason. So it, it's a combination, but honestly, and Doc's like one of my favourite players and favourite humans, on the field, outside of the intangibles that I can't speak to, leadership and all that, um, and just inspiration, which I you can't calculate, his role, we have the talent in the, on the team to to fill. Uh, we've got we're stacked in the wing at the moment. We're stacked at half back, which are his two primary roles. He plays inside. He's been playing inside. We're stacked in the inside mid as well. And then he was doing a bit of pinch hitting up forward and that sort of half forward line, which we don't have it this week. But you've got Elijah Hollands to come back, Jack Martin to come back. So honestly, as as much as I love him and and I we're better when he's on the field. I think in terms of reproducing his output we, we've got the players to do it mm-hmm. we're probably sacrificing guys to fit doc into the midfield sacrificing a kennedy or a hewitt or whatever so um mm, good point on the field i i i touch like i don't know i i, I don't feel i feel confident that that we're probably not going to miss him from a production output what i can't calculate is all the other stuff mm-hmm. sam has taken this opportunity to ask the yeah, super coach expert <laughs> while he's here. Who do I put in for Sam Naismith? Yeah, well, we don't have many uh, R3s to choose from. So if Jordan Sweet's named, he's a bit more expensive, maybe him. But otherwise, it's just whatever the cheapest ruck forward available is, which I think is Finbar O'Malley or whatever. He's a North Melbourne player. So, yep, that's your answer. Okay. Thank you very much. James with a 1,000... I believe that's yen. I believe that's yen. Go Blues. Thanks as always, Terry and Guy. <laughs> well, Guy is left off. <laughs> it's all right, mate. So I do this show every week for the last two, three years. It's all right. It's all right. James Meat Leg. James Meat Leg Dog Leg Dog Meat James. <laughs> yeah, I had a successful footy, footy podcast for 10 years. Oh, it's all right. It's fine. It's fine. I, I run doing- sports in the Herald Sun. It's all right. Don't worry about it. You were only doing content before all of us. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. That's fine. <laughs> oh, that's too good. That's too good. Um, what else is on the agenda? We're just waiting for uh, for Quinn to arrive. To be honest. Yeah, I'm I'm padding. I'm gonna have to jump off uh, in the yeah. next fifteen or so, but I'm happy to yeah. uh, to keep chatting. 
Um, oh, Shane Matthews, don't forget VFL practice match tomorrow, Thursday, March, Richmond v. Carlton, Swinburne Centre. Is that the? Is that just the Richmond pun over pun, pun road over whatever it's called? Yeah. Um, uh, oh, right outside the MCG. True. Yeah. Is that oh, Swinburne's that's actually it must a be. good point. I think it is. Let me just check on 4 that. 4pm, Shane Matthews says. Four times 25 minutes. Uh, that's a little tradition, actually. I, I generally leave work early on the Thursday and go to that that game that's, that's on beforehand. So, yeah, I think we should rock up and have a look at your Jackson Binzes and your, I don't know. Ashton. I don't know if Pitto will play. Ashton, Ashton, Ashton yeah. Mm. You'd think one of them will be a hold over just in case. Mm-hmm. Mm. Hey, good shout, right. Shane. Well, Quinn is here. Leck Dog, thanks for being here. Uh, we'll see you soon. See you next week. See you later. Thanks for having me. Ciao. All right, guys. Uh, I was going to do this separately, but like while you're all here, we're going to do the combined 22. I've got Quinn here. Hello, mate. Terry, how are you, mate? Mate, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, very excited to get the real stuff back, get footy back in Melbourne. A hundred percent. It's, uh, I know you would have had the same feelings. It was weird last week watching both our teams run out when it, it wasn't round one. It was a weird feeling. So now it'll be good to be back at the G tomorrow where, where it really should be. Yeah. Hey, I've got to ask you because I said this earlier in the show, I watched Richmond last week. And what I said was, I wasn't sure if the Suns were so good, if the Tigers were just started poorly, and then the comeback. I wasn't sure if it was real or if the Suns took the foot off. From the Richmond point of view, what was last week? Oh, uh, a nightmare um, is a good way to describe it. It was, um, no, I think the Suns were red hot. They, they started so well. Um, you know, obviously, Dimmer was able to expose us way too easily. No, no team should be able to kick 11 goals on you, so... That was tough. Um, I do think the fight back, I think it was real. I don't think it was Gold Coast letting up. I think it was real because then you did see Gold Coast turning around it again at the end. So I think I think we're capable in patches. I just don't think we're a team that can do it for four quarters and sustain it like we're used to anymore. And I think that's what showed on, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got a big night tonight because you're here with me. you got the Forever Rivals on the Jumper Punch YouTube channel. So I do appreciate you taking out some time to, to get this done. Uh, what we're going to do is we, we're going to do a combined 23. There's only one rule, and the rule is we can only select players from the teams that were selected. Um, so that probably makes it a little bit easier with some of the outs that Carlton have. Um <sighs> <laughs> I was thinking that when I saw the teams, I thought this makes my job a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So no weedering or Walsh to worry about just yet. Let me just fix that up there. Maybe we can fix this up here. All right. Hang on a minute. Maybe a little bit of that. Yeah. A little bit of that and a little bit of that. There we go. Is that looking clean there? That's perfect. That's All perfect. right. Okay. So, chat, you can get involved in this as well. Um, I don't know how many Richmond supporters are in here. So, Quinn, fair play to you, mate. It's a brave, <laughs> the brave, brave man coming onto the Blue Abroad YouTube channel to try and pick some it's Richmond a, players in this team. <laughs> it's a dangerous place to be. It's a dangerous place to be the Blue Abroad YouTube channel, but <laughs> nah, it's always good fun. So, happy to, uh, happy to front up. Yeah. So, I think what we do, and this is, we haven't really prepared at all. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll just name a back six, a midfield six, a forward six, and then we'll do a bench and yeah. kind of go from there. So oh, do you have six names you want to start off? I like to let the guests start and then and then and then retaliate from there. All right. All right. So this is this is me naming both Richmond and Carlton players that I think will start in the six. Is that yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. What what are your thoughts as well on I'm like positional changes. So I'm looking at some players and, you know, they're listed in one spot of the ground, but are you happy to move players around as long as they're on that list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Happy to, happy to, you know, do a little bit of this, little bit of that to get certain names in if we need to. <laughs> yeah, all right. Perfect. perfect. Yeah, well, we had a couple had her, Harry Mackay and Charlie Kerno in the team last week. So, you know. Okay, perfect. Yeah, well, I'm happy to do a bit of wriggle, uh, wriggling around then. So I had my... 
mine all written up. So I'll start in the pocket. Um, I think I would have to go. I like what Carlton's done there. I like Zach Williams in the pocket. So I'm going to go Williams. This is where I'm moving players around. I'm putting Noah Bolter at fullback. I like okay. him. I think with Weedering out of the team, and I don't love Bolter as a forward just yet. I'm not sold on him. So I'm going to put Bolter at fullback. Um, then I think in the other pocket, I'm going to have Nick Vlosten. I want to have Adam Saad on one half back flank. I want to have Mitch McGovern at center half back. And I want Daniel Rioli on the other flank. I can't, I actually can't disagree with that. I think that's fair and reasonable. <laughs> that's a win. <laughs> I think that is fair and reasonable. Um, that'll obviously pay us back later on. No, nah, I, yeah, I think that's completely fair and reasonable. Um, wow, that was that was easy. So, I, I broad, yeah, I'm happy with that. Broad and short and Newman are probably the notable names that we'll just put to the side and maybe they could feature on the bench. Um, but that seems pretty strong. Um, yeah. let's do the midfield, let's uh, do the midfield. Yeah. This, this is where I was battling. I was looking at it before and I was thinking, oh, geez, because your, your midfield's so strong and it's sort of hard to argue anyone from our point of view, but I'm going to do my best. Um, are we doing this, the, the wings as well, obviously? Yeah, so the six midfielders, including uh, the Ruckman. Okay, So perfect. if you well, want to play two on... Rucks, we'll have one on, the, one on the field and one on the bench. If you want to play one, on the bench. obviously, yeah. Yeah, perfect. All right. Well, I'm um, to squeeze a few Richmond plays in. I'm going to move some things around from the way Carlton have lined up, but I want Acres on one wing and I want Shera on the other. This is just to fit him in. I want Nankervis as the Ruckman. And then in the middle, I want Cripps. I'm going to have Taranto and probably. Who did I have? I had someone in my mind just before. Now I've lost it. It slipped my mind. And probably Hewitt. I'll probably put Hewitt in there as well. So that was... Is that everyone? Have I missed someone? Acres, Acres, Cripps, Chera with Nank, Hewitt, and Taranto. Yeah. You can put Taranto on the wing. We'll put Chera into the midfield. How about that? Oh. <laughs> I'm happy to. <laughs> Only because of the channel I'm on, I'm happy to let that one slide. I think it would be weird oh. seeing Taranto run around on the wing, but I'm happy to let that one go because as long as he's on that list, think, I'm happy to have that. I think that is the six. I think they, they are the best six that you could name. Uh, all right. Yeah. Let's do the forward line. All right, now this is the big question I'm starting with because I feel like it's the elephant in the room. And you said last week you got away with it. What are your thoughts on the three big tools? I am happy to play three tools, which would mean De Koning doesn't make the team because Harry will just do a bit of pinch hitting in the ruck. Uh, yeah. But we did it last week. And I mean, Tom Lynch, I'm not going to sit here and say I don't rate Tom Lynch to be in a combined 23 of these two teams. So even though he is, you know, obviously underdone, but it's Tom Lynch at the end of the day. So I, I'm I'm all for having three tools. All right. All right. Perfect. Well, then I think I've got – I had Motlop in my team before. I didn't realize he wasn't going to get picked tonight. So it's thrown a bit of a spanner in the works for me. But mm -hmm. I'll start off. It might be a little bit all over the place. I want Dusty on one flank. Mm -hmm. I want Harry at center half forward. I will then want oh, we don't want on the other flank. I'm gonna come back to the other flank. Then in full right. forward. In I'll full go one forward. for you. Let's go. All right, all right. Well, I'll let that one slip in in a sec. I want at full forward, I want to have it's weird seeing him there, but Lynch in one pocket. I want Kerno at full forward, obviously. Um the no arguments for where Kerner should be playing, I don't think. And then I want Shea Bolton in the other pocket. Okay. Who are you thinking for the flank? I completely agree, and I've got the guy for the flank. I don't know how he's rated outside of Carlton, <clears throat> but I've come to completely understand how important he is to winning a game of football because of the way he runs, and that's Matt Cottrell. So I'm going to put Matt Cottrell. 
So, and again, I don't know how what what his um, reputation is on the outside of Carlton, but I, I'm going to make the case for Matty Cottrell. I think from I think outside of Carlton, he's just one of those blokes who you just presume is a bit of a spud. And okay. I think watching watching Carlton as closely as I have the last couple of years, like you said, you you quickly learn that he he's very far from that, and he actually is really important. But I think when you look at him, you just want to think he's a spud for some reason. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's to look about him. But I actually do agree with that. I can see that because he pushes up the ground as well and almost plays that second wing if he needs to. But then he, he pushes back into the right spot and he can kick goals. So um, no, I'm happy to have Cottrell on that other flank. All right. There was, a, there was a time in life, there was a period of time in my life where I thought the same thing about Jack Revolt, but he went on to win three flags. <laughs> so. <laughs> He won three Coleman's as well, so he's, even his individual Coleman, stats yeah. uh, work for themselves. So. Yeah, had to give it to him. I, I never thought I'd live to see the day where I'm like, yeah, Jack Revolt was definitely better than Nick, but here we are. <laughs> the world's <laughs> a funny place, right? The world is a funny place. <laughs> yep. So for the bench, I'm going to suggest that I give two names and you give two names. How's that sound? Yeah, perfect. I like that. All right. So my first name will be Nick Newman. I think he's too good to not be in a combined 23. And my second name is Prestia. We didn't yeah. name Prestia in on the field, did we? No. No, we didn't. No, no mm. Prestia. All right. I like that. Newman, silly question, but obviously playing on, on the half back line, like coming in as a back rotation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. I like that. Well, Prestia was going to be one of mine, um, so I'm happy you put him in there. I think my other one, it was going to be Jaden Short, but I think with Nick Newman in there, you probably don't need a Jaden Short in that side. So who do we go? Who's missed out for well, Carlton a, as well? He's a very good player, Jaden Short. We could put him anywhere we want him. That is true. Actually, that, that reminds me, the one I had in mind – and I actually had him for my flank originally, but I'm happy to have him on the bench because he is a bit of a universal player. Uh, I want Liam Baker on the bench because I think he can play anywhere. So do you rate Liam Baker more important than a Jaden Short? Like what's the what's the ranking? Oh, it's a tough one because I think they're so different. I think Liam Baker is more important because he's a lot more versatile. I think you can play him in the midfield. You can play him in the forward line. You can play him as a halfback if you need to. But I think the, the meters gained that we get from Jaden Short um, and the defensive work that he does is also super important. So I, I, honestly, it's a it's a coward answer, but it's it's probably too hard for me to split the two. <laughs> but, but I think it's such a coward answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a weak answer, but I think to split the two would be hard for me on a personal but on a personal level. But I think for this team, just because he's so universal and he can play multiple roles, and I wouldn't mind another backup in that forward line as well. I think I'm gonna. I want Liam Baker. Okay. Um, and then I'm. Oh, and I think the obvious one that we've missed, and again, as a forward line, I heard you speak about it on the last show. I think it's hard not to give Orazio a look in. I think it's too hard not to give him a look. Wow, he's earned some respect. Yeah. I like it. I like yeah. it. Now, I'll, 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 I'll will happily have Orazio Fantasia. Uh, did, the Essendon supporters were in the comments recently telling me that he plays well against Richmond traditionally. Is that is there any truth to that? Yeah, there is. Um, okay. As much as I don't like to admit it, there is a bit of truth to that. So it's uh, I tell you, it's getting to the point for Richmond supporters. Maybe it's just me, but we're we're getting desperate where we're looking at any little thing that might give us a glimpse of hope. Where I was looking at Supercoach the other day and. On top of Kerno's name, it said traditionally doesn't score well against Richmond. I'm like, oh, there we go. We're a chance. We're a chance. Kerno doesn't score well. <laughs> and then you remember he's won two Coleman's in a row and he's absolutely on fire. So it's, yeah, it's, it we're clutching at straws at the moment, I think. But yeah, no, Fantasia normally does play quite well against us. Okay. So with Charlie, it's really interesting because usually we would play you first up. And I found, well, last season and the season before that, He's never as sharp in round one as what he is in round two. He needs a game just to, you know, sharpen up. And even if you look at uh, one of his goals against the Lions, like he didn't completely take the ball. He kind of juggled it, juggled it, juggled it, and still kicked the goal. And then round two last year, really sharp against the Geelong Footy Club, bit of a shootout with Jeremy Cameron. So um, I think Charlie's going to be in uh, tip-top shape for you guys. Um, we'll get to that because I have some questions about your defense. Um, who's our yeah. sub? Oh, 
Is this a Jaden Short? This could be a Jaden Short, yeah. Because I feel like, again, he's one of those names where he's almost, it's almost a letdown to not have him on that list somewhere. So I'd be have, more than happy to have Shorty as our sub, which does sound weird because he's starting 22 every week on Richmond's list. So it seems weird having him as a sub, but no, nah, I'd, I'd more than happily have him there. Is there anyone from your list that you think has maybe been stiff not to get on? I mean, there's a couple of good names there, but just maybe off recent form. Yeah, that look, solid names here, but I mean, I try my best to be as fair and reasonable when I do these exercises. I couldn't, th- I mean, to be honest, I'd probably have Fant- Fantasia as the sub and Short as the player on the bench just because Short, I rate Short really highly. Uh, and that's why I asked you because I, I, I think he's like a star. Um, I think Broad is also a champion player, but obviously maybe coming towards that back end of his career, uh, maybe he does, doesn't get as much of a look in, but I do like him uh, from Carlton. No, nah, I mean, no, nah, I, think, I think we've got it well. I think we've got it pretty right. I like that we have Hewitt in there because he's had a pretty good start. <clears throat> um, De Koning's probably a little, it's a little tough, but hey, Nanky's Nank, you know? Yeah. I, I, I like what De Koning is doing and the trajectory that he's headed on. Um, mm. I just think at this point in time, I'm going to get a bit more reliability out of Nank, but I think the upside for De Koning is, is yeah, is, 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 is amazing. So if we did this in 12 months' time, Good chance I'd probably be swapping that around. Okay. Um, now, your backs. What are who is who's your full back? Who's your center half back tomorrow? Like who takes Harry and Charlie is kind of where I'm what I'm getting at. Because I watched Ben King play on Gib, young Gibkiss last week. Yeah. So yeah. how do you think that one plays out? Yeah, this is the tough one. I mean, I think in the past we've had Grimes go to Kerno and normally do a decent job, but I just don't know if Grimes has got it in him to take. Charlie anymore, but then at the same time, I don't think our young guys are quite ready to take Charlie. So honestly, I feel like Tyler Young will be the one to go to Harry Mackay. I just think Tyler Young's a bit more built than Gibkiss. I think he's got that um, that more strength where he can match it with with Harry because Harry's obviously a big, strong dude as well. So I think that will be the matchup there. And honestly, I think it'll be Gibkiss on Kerno, but it will see a bit of Grimes sort of coming in from the side and, and helping with that double team there and just to chop him out because. There's not much anyone can do to stop Kerno. It doesn't matter who you are as a defender, whether you're Stephen May, Darcy Moore, you know, or Tyler Young. It's going to be tough regardless. So I think we're going to have to do the double up on him. But I feel like those will be the the matchups to start the game, at least anyway. I do have a prediction that Bolter will end up having to go back because we'll start getting pantsed and we'll need yeah. the help. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the game. How does it play out? What are you, where are you sitting? What's your... What does Quinn do tomorrow and then what happens in the game? Yeah, well, what Quinn does is probably a bit more exciting than what the result might be for me, I think. But it's uh, just normal day at work, head to Richmond as early as possible, get to the pub, have a few drinks beforehand, soak in the atmosphere. That round one atmosphere is, honestly, apart from finals, nothing really beats it. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm sitting M23, level one at the G, great spot. Um, so I'm really loving that. Then I think how the game pans out, I think... Honestly, I think it'll be similar to last week. I think Richmond will kick the first goal. Um, I think the fans will be up and about. It'll look like it could be a cracker. And then I think Carlton will slowly wear us down a little bit um, and just probably run away with it. I heard your prediction of a 50-point margin. I'm praying to God that doesn't happen. <laughs> it'll be a tough one to sit through. Respectfully. But I definitely, respectfully. Oh, yeah, you did say respectfully. I'll give you that. I'll, I appreciate the respectfully part to that one. Um, I can definitely see it blowing out to that. The only reason... I'm saying it might not is just because traditionally in the past, even when the tables were turned and, you know, and Richmond were the heavy favorites and Carlton were towards the bottom, these matches were always so close. Like you go back to 2019, Richmond won the flag, Carlton finished last, but round one was tight. And it usually mm-hmm. came down to that last quarter where, you know, we would run away in the past. So I don't know if it'll be that close, but I do feel like we'll be thereabouts purely because we do love a big game. The crowd will be massive. Um, I know the ins we've got are huge as well, and they love a big game as well. They are a bit underdone, obviously, but um, yeah, I, I think I reckon it'll be closer to the thirty-point margin, just because of that close fact closeness factor that we've had in the past. Um, but I think if you're putting on, like you know, on a, on a piece of paper, which team is better? I think Carlton are a fifty-point better team at the moment. I just think mm-hmm. that rivalry and everything will just make that make it that little bit closer. We had a little bit of that last week where. 
Brisbane were heavily favoured to win the game. We were away from home. It was a bit of different circumstances. Um, so, and, and that's the challenge for Carlton now. You go into these games externally, everyone's expecting you to win and win well against these these teams. You know, Richmond's in this new phase, in this new era. But yeah, I mean, it's... No, oh, the Tigs will be up and about tomorrow, won't they? <laughs> I'm telling uh, you now, uh, uh, you probably can't compare it. And I mean, not, I guess not many of you were there either, but... The raw last week, I was saying this earlier, the raw last week that Harry got, you know, when he when he kicked that winning goal and obviously what, what you know, there's so much behind that. When Tom Lynch takes his first his first grab and kicks a goal, the Richmond fans are going nuts because we haven't seen him since like round three or four last season and we've been that keen to get him out there. Oh, wow. If he kicks one early, I just have a feeling the crowd will be up and about and not going to swing, the you know, the, the momentum in our favour, but I think it'll just... I think it'll just make the game that much more exciting because it'll it'll be a little bit closer, a little bit more heated for that little bit of time, just because the fans will be rolled up. Because we we've missed Lynch, and you know, I think he's most our most important player. And um, when we felt yeah. his absence last year, so when he comes on, if he kicks a goal early, I think it'll be it'll be huge. Oh boy. Okay. Well. Fuck! It's so good, eh? It's so good to be back. It's so good. Um, good luck tomorrow. But more good luck for the rest of the season, not so much tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I might see you floating around at the MCG or uh, just around tomorrow. Uh, thanks so much for coming on. I know it was last minute and late notice, but uh, I really appreciate it. And um, enjoy yourself on Forever Rivals. Rocco's up and about, as I'm sure you're aware. Oh, and, um, <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I've heard all from Rocco the last. Oh, mate, he's, he's next level up. I'm glad I've been eased into the Carlton chat with you because you're, you're a bit more level-headed, you know, you're a bit more respectful and Rocco's just going to absolutely let me have it in, uh, in about 20 minutes. So, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not looking forward to it, but uh, it's going to be good fun. Yep. Um, be good fun. We, but no, you, you're absolutely. On same same well. to you, Matt. I appreciate you having me on as well. And, um, yeah, not, 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 not so much best of luck for tomorrow, but for the rest of the season, you guys are headed in the right direction. Um, and I've got a lot of Carlton people close to me in my life, so I do genuinely... Wish you guys the best of luck, just not tomorrow night or around 14. No, I appreciate that. Uh, before I do let you go, um, Tiger Den TV, yes. yeah. what's the story? Yes. We're going again this year. Pressure point, where can we find you? How do we get around you? How do we support you? Yeah, so we're yeah, we're going again. Tiger Den's going again. Um, I'm Honestly, I'm, I'm a much minier version of what um, you're doing at the moment and sort of using you as a bit of a guiding step for me with the Richmond side of things. There's not much of that happening at the moment. So if there are any Richmond fans on this stream, definitely head over there, check that out. Um, there'll be plenty of on the plenty on the Instagram content. The YouTube will be firing up again very shortly. Pressure Point is purely Instagram now. The podcast um, has come to an end, sadly, just focusing on our individual clubs. We found that a bit easier because we all seem to talk about them anyway. So We've sort of gone our separate ways with that one, but the Instagram's still going for footy content. But yeah, in terms of the YouTube stuff, Tiger Den TV is uh, is where it's going to be at. All right, I put it in the chat. Chat, get around him, get around, get around Quinn, get around Tiger Den TV. Uh, you know what? You are on the journey to your next premiership at Richmond, and uh, you know you start now. It could be this year. It could be who knows. Um, but wish you all the best and. I think this has been like the fifth year or fourth year that we've like kind of known each other in this space. It's strange. Yeah. Huh? It, it, it goes so fast. I think it's probably been there about the fourth year, I would say now. Um, and I, I did actually want to say, I was going to say it beforehand, but I honestly wanted to say so, big congratulations, man. The, the, the journey that you've been on with this channel and everything that you're, you're doing, like, again, I've known you for probably the last four years now and to see where you were then to where you are now, it's, leaps and bounds the the journey you've taken so big congratulations man i'm very happy for you and everything you've been able to achieve no i appreciate it mate i appreciate it it's just um yeah it's just a bit of fun and to be honest it, the compound thing happens because we've got we're very fortunate we have so many great contributors and and other creators and uh it doesn't grow like this without them so it's just uh just about keeping the family together and um that's really that's that's the magic formula just sticking together so uh no i appreciate the nice words thank you very much sneezy breezy for the 15 flaggers quinn enjoy forever rivals uh sending love and go blues thank you very much Matt. i'll see you soon go tigers there you guys <laughs> good night